Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 marks the current conclusion of the Guardians' journey in the MCU. However, it's understandable to question if this truly marks the end of these characters. While recent films in the MCU have felt like filler episodes whose purpose is solely to set up a future entry in the franchise, this film stands on its own. The story is isolated, which gives the illusion of finality. In more ways than one, Guardians 3 is a unique entry in an otherwise convoluted extended film universe. Although a fourth Guardians of the Galaxy film is unlikely in the near future, the Guardians have made appearances in other Marvel movies before, so there's a chance we may see them in cameos during Phase 5 and beyond. But enough for solace, let's dive into the post credit scene, and be warned, we will be dissecting everything, so some serious spoilers ahead. At the end of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, we witness the disbandment of the Guardians team, and while this is undoubtedly a sad development, the second post credit scene offers hope that the team may reunite in the future. Throughout the movie, Mantis, who we were introduced to in the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, tries to convince Peter to visit his mourning grandfather on Earth. Eventually, Peter decides to fulfill this request and returns to Earth. Despite his initial reluctance, he discovers that his grandfather recognizes him and embraces him warmly. And in a fitting conclusion to an extraordinary story arc, Peter decides to stay on Earth and live with his grandfather. Meanwhile, Mantis sets out on her own cosmic journey with her adorable new offspring. Although Drax wishes to accompany her, Mantis insists on pursuing her destiny independently. However, Nebula convinces Drax to remain on Nowhere, where the Guardians now own the city and require assistance in managing the growing population of children and animals. This decision prompts a change in heart in Nebula, who finally acknowledges Drax's caring nature and recognizes him as something of a father figure. And not so surprisingly, Drax agrees. I was so curious what they were going to do with Gamora. There's been a thing of OG Gamora's death supposedly not meaning as much since the alternative version is around. But they really showed that she isn't our Gamora, which is how it should have gone. Her being there was hard for Peter, but him realizing she wasn't the woman he fell in love with was a good storyline. And from his perspective, she belonged with the Guardians. But the ending of her finding happiness with the Ravagers shows she has a better life here than she did with Thanos. So technically, Peter and Gamora's romantic relationship does not come to fruition. However, Peter comes to terms with this outcome and she returns with the Ravagers. All of this leaves Peter feeling distressed about the departure of his Guardian's family. It all leads to a dramatic scene where Rocket declares that this is the end of the Guardians, but the team members, including Rocket, acknowledge him as the new leader and affirm that the universe will always need its Guardians. The first post credit scene introduces the new Guardians of the Galaxy team. However, it is uncertain if they will still retain the name Guardians of the Galaxy based on the lineup of characters. The new team consists of Rocket Raccoon, King Groot, Cosmo the Dog, Adam Warlock, Kraglin, and Phil Avell. The scene showcases their camaraderie and shared love for music, reminiscent of the original Guardians. Rocket plays Come and Get Your Love by Redbone, a callback to the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. They prepare to embark on a new mission, hinting at the team's future adventures. Just because the original members have gone their separate ways doesn't mean the team itself falls apart. Then we see the new Guardians of the Galaxy team enter the fight. However, there's more to this scene. There is a plot leak that accurately describes this scene, but the leaked team was referred to as the Annihilators. It's interesting to note that Adam Warlock was part of this group, along with other incredible characters like the Silver Surfer and Beta Ray Bill, who might make appearances in the MCU soon. Nova is also a member of the team. Although he wasn't teased in this movie, there's a possibility for him to join in the future. The Annihilators were originally formed to take on Thanos, but with the multiverse, anything is possible. For now, this is our new Guardians team, but they could eventually become the Annihilators. We know most of the team members except Phil Avell, who was introduced in this movie. She is one of the almost perfect subjects created by High Evolutionary. In the trailer and movie, we see her running and enduring without getting tired, surviving on minimal calories. She is the epitome of evolution and is now part of the Guardians of the Galaxy team after they helped rescue her and her siblings. 
In the comics, Philavelle is a Kree and the genetically engineered daughter of Marvel. However, in the MCU, they've made some changes to her character, although she's still genetically engineered by the High Evolutionary. It's unclear if she is a Kree, unless the High Evolutionary somehow obtained her from the Kree. Regardless, she will likely play a significant role in the future of the MCU. Also, we've noticed that her eyes glow purple, which is a sign of cosmic energy. This suggests she will likely be powerful. Now, let's talk about the second post credit scene. There isn't much to it, but there is one crucial point that Marvel Studios wants us to know. There might be a significant multiversal tease here. We cut back to Peter Quill and his grandpa. A newspaper headline mentions that Kevin Bacon has been kidnapped, and they engage in some banter about chores. There's nothing incredibly important in terms of the scene or the dialogue itself. However, what comes next is what matters. After the scene, we see a white screen with the words, The Legendary Star-Lord Will Return. This has sparked various theories, and I personally lean towards the multiverse theory. Let me explain. I've come across this rumor and theory online quite a bit, and this is, in fact, the general trend we see in Marvel movies. Typically, when Marvel Studios announces that a character will return, they use a black background with white letters. However, in this case, it's the opposite, a white background with black letters. Marvel Studios tends to do things with intention, so the theory is that Star-Lord will indeed return, but as a variant. We might see another version of Star-Lord in the MCU, just not the one we're familiar with. Considering that Secret Wars is approaching, where universes collide and variants interact, it's possible that we'll encounter different versions of Star-Lord. They could still be portrayed by Chris Pratt or someone else. Since we are getting closer to Secret Wars, this could hold significant meaning. As a side note, in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, it was similarly stated that King will return, suggesting a potential connection. It's also worth noting that the legendary Star-Lord was a comic run where Star-Lord had a solo adventure. Now that he has left the Guardians and is on Earth, there's a possibility of him getting his own solo story. Chris Pratt mentioned that he's open to returning, so a Star-Lord solo adventure similar to Star Wars could be a possibility, until he eventually reunites with the Guardians and the Avengers in Secret Wars. In Secret Wars, it's assumed that many characters will reunite since the entire universe, including the heroes on Earth, will need to come together, join forces with some other universes, and defeat King the Conqueror and his variants. Therefore, a reunion for the true original Guardians of the Galaxy team could be set up for the future in Secret Wars. However, we'll have to wait and see. In the meantime, each member of the team is pursuing their own endeavors, and we have a new Guardians of the Galaxy team. So, even if you are bummed out that you won't be getting to see the original Guardians together, I'm sure this will make for a compelling reassurance. But anyways, guys, that wraps up the explanation of the ending and post credit scene. What are your thoughts on the movie? Do you think Star-Lord will return as some variant of himself for Secret War? Let us know down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.